How do you manage to get out of bed in the morning? Um, well, it's not really something I think about. I'm just, I'm just motivated to, to contribute something positive to the world. I, I set goals for myself, I make plans. Um, life is here and life is good. It wakes me up every morning, uh, regardless of, of, uh, of what uh, we may be doing. Uh, to our ecosystem, uh, it is basically good and we're part of it and uh, that gives me a lot of uh, hope and, uh, and strength. The, the barrier to action on climate change is it is so fun, it requires such fundamental changes to absolutely everything about our society that it's much easier to just plow ahead and hope that we can come up with a technological fix in dealing with what climate change involves, which is reducing energy demand and fundamentally looking at our economic system. So it's, a, it's easier to simplify the problem and to address what it's telling us. We're told that uh, by 2050, which is a, sort of the end date that's been used by a lot of people now, that we need to have from somewhere between 80% to 100% decarbonization of our economy, uh, which is absolutely massive. Uh, that means basically no more fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are the key constituents of our current economy. That is an absolutely massive uh, overhaul. Climate change deniers, so people who don't believe you and who don't want to take action. And... The uh, biggest uh, profit maker in the global economy in 2008 was Exxon. They made $45 billion in profit, which is the most money any company has ever made in the history of the free market gives you a sense of the centrality of fossil fuels to our current economy. They have lots of money, lots of power, and they're going to do everything in their, uh, at their disposal uh, to ensure that some of these alternatives don't maybe come on as quickly as they can. What depresses me and what makes me actually not depressed, angry, is the unwillingness to, to be honest about it. That makes me, and that, the deception, the, the cultural deception about it. I think some barriers to action are like self-efficacy and in individuals and feeling like they can do these things and, and, and getting past those kind of personal boundaries within us, our personal psychology, whatever's holding us back from, from putting ourselves out there in the world and making positive change. Uh, and then and just culturally as well, people are used to a certain standard of living and used to certain conveniences that may need to change if we can't find an energy source to replace fossil fuels at their current scale. So. Uh, so yeah, there's massive, uh, massive barriers. Well, I talk about climate myopia. Climate change isn't about climate. Climate change is about a growth fetish that's embedded in an economic system and a political system that is a hugely difficult problem that requires us to talk about things like capitalism, the role of the state, whether we're really citizens or consumers. We make and remake the world every day with the decisions that we make and don't make. And so I think sort of uh, getting re reacquainted with our power uh, is, uh, is really important and, and where that power ultimately resides is when we come together with, with others. Working. Seeing it as saving human species, saving ourselves and flipping the coin and seeing, you know, species at risk. We're a species at risk. We're just like any other pl species on this planet. And we have to learn to adapt and we have to learn to change. And we also need to start thinking about what we might call nonlinear political change, which is suddenly the possibilities that seem completely ridiculous uh, in the current moment could become very possible very quickly. And I think that's something that we need to plan for and free up our imagination to think, well, what kind of world do we want to live in? There's tons of possibility. I am not sure, given the trajectories that we're on and given the depth of the problems, given the lack of a conversation about what these problems really entail, given resistance to alternatives, I'm not sure that climate change can be overcome. A lot of people say we have to crash and, and that we will crash. And then we won't have options for just make do. The whole idea of, oh, we need to save the planet, you know, that's seeing ourselves as separate from the planet. But we're not separate from the planet. The planet's fine, actually. She'll live, she'll um, Obviously, you want to try to live your values, and so you want to change your life in such a way that you feel like you're part of the a solution, not part of the problem. 
Uh, but you also need to recognize that uh, there's only so much that one individual can do, which is why you need to join up with other individuals and uh, form larger groups. And remember that uh, huge amounts of power reside in large uh, groups of people working collectively towards common ends. And colonization was ended uh, that way. Slavery was ended uh, uh, that way. What keeps me inspired is just this basic sense that the world is good and that we are personal manifestations of that goodness and the strength of the world courses through us uh, and that there is that basic goodness and I think channeling that is extremely important. I would actually argue, it might be simplistic, but that some of our most you know, vexing political, economic, ecological problems root back to our inability to see that, to see that the world is basically good. I take moments whenever I can like, <laughs> to just take time out and, and and connect with like what what motivates me, which is nature, children, joy. Uh, all it's, these. it's a basically good situation that we emerge out of. Uh, apples grow. We get to eat them. They taste delicious. We throw the core uh, away into either the bushes or to our compost pile and it provides fertile soil for the next, next thing to come. You know, there's just a certain uh, symmetry and, and, and wonder to how, things, to how things work here, you know. Did you know that in times in my life when I've been actively engaged in these issues is when I felt most hopeful and most excited. In times when I've kind of been sitting back and just reading the news is when I get a bit depressed. And so the first thing would just be to get involved somehow. Just start doing something <laughs> of some kind, you know, and, and with other people. That's, you can't just do something by yourself. It needs to be with other people. So before you get scared and get bogged down by all the depressing information that's out there, you as one person hold a, a ton of power. So don't stop. I mean, if you're depressed, if you're anxious, the, one of the best things to do is just be active and go do stuff, right? Make a plan and just go do it. Yeah, I think my advice would be the number one thing, the number one obstacle to climate change is we don't speak the truth. I think we have to be willing to say it like it is. Our condition here is basically good. We don't need to war against it by uh, you know, consuming insane amounts of resource to make ourselves feel fuller or better or bigger. We're already there. You know, we're already good. And I think the more that we're able to channel that, the, the better off we'll be. And so I think, again, in terms of being able to stay inspired, it's just that the world that we want is right here, right now. Uh, and again, the more we can see that.